In this video, we're going to talk about enzyme inhibition. On MCAT, you often have questions where they'll give you experimental data looking at how fast an enzyme is catalyzing a reaction, and then they add an inhibitor. And then when they add the inhibitor, you'll see either data in a table, a figure, a graph, that will then ask you what type of inhibitor it is. So in this video, we're going to talk about the different types of inhibitors you need to know for the MCAT, and we'll also talk about how the inhibitors will affect the shape of the michaelis menten saturation curve. In a subsequent video, we're going to look at how inhibitors affect Lineweaver-Burke plots. All right, so our first inhibitor is the competitive inhibitor. And to understand how the inhibitors inhibit the reaction, we're looking back at the same reaction that michaelis menten kinetics is referring to. So in competitive inhibition, the inhibitor binds directly to the enzyme to form this enzyme inhibitor complex EI. This enzyme inhibitor complex cannot react. So because it cannot react, when the inhibitor binds to the enzyme, you're not able to get the enzyme to produce the product that you want, so the reaction is being inhibited. Now, there are a couple additional important pieces of information you need to know here. Number one is knowing for the inhibitor, where does it bind to on the enzyme? Now, the name here essentially gives it away that this is competitive inhibition. So the inhibitor is competing directly with the substrate to bind to the enzyme. So the substrate binds to the active site. So to compete, our inhibitor is also binding to the active site. All right, now there are a couple other important terms that we want to understand and how the competitive inhibitor affects these terms. You'll recall that this is the Km as well as the Vmax. The Km, you'll recall, as being inversely related to the affinity of the enzyme to the substrate. So here, when we add the inhibitor, you need to ask yourself, is it now easier or harder for the enzyme to bind to its substrate? And in this case, when you add the inhibitor, it's now harder because the enzyme wants to bind to the substrate, but if the inhibitor is present, sometimes it will bind to the inhibitor and form the enzyme inhibitor complex. So we say here that the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate has decreased, which means Km has increased. We can then talk about Vmax, the maximum reaction velocity. As you can see in the michaelis menten saturation curve, you're essentially just asking yourself, at extremely high substrate concentrations, is the inhibitor going to affect the maximum reaction velocity? And for the competitive inhibitor, in this case, it does not. The maximum reaction velocity stays the same. And you can think of this by considering a couple situations. So let's say you have a situation with 100 enzyme molecules and 100 substrates and 100 inhibitors. In that case, you might just think, oh, half the time my enzyme will bind to substrate, and the other half of the time the enzyme will bind to inhibitor. However, if you have another situation where you've got 100 enzymes, 100 inhibitors, and a billion substrates, then statistically, your enzyme is never going to get to an inhibitor because it's surrounded by so many more substrate molecules. So in this case, we do say that increasing substrate concentration can overcome competitive inhibitors. All right, so now with this information, we can draw what the michaelis menten saturation curve looks like once you add the competitive inhibitor. And it looks like this, with this red line I'm drawing right here, where you can see in the graph that the maximum reaction velocity doesn't change. You're still able to get to that same maximum reaction velocity. However, what you can appreciate, though, is that you do need a larger substrate concentration to reach the half maximum reaction velocity. Right? This reflects, again, the fact that Km is larger with the inhibitor, showing that the inhibitor decreases the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate. Okay.
That's our first type of inhibition. Let's take a look at our second type, which is called uncompetitive inhibition. In uncompetitive inhibition, the inhibitor does not compete with the substrate to bind to the enzyme. In fact, the uncompetitive inhibitor can't even bind directly to the enzyme itself. The uncompetitive inhibitor can only bind to the enzyme substrate complex, and when it binds, you form this enzyme substrate inhibitor complex, which similarly has a problem because it can't react. All right, so again, if some of the enzymes are being taken out and can't react, our reaction has been inhibited by the inhibitor. So we want to consider the same questions we ask for the competitive inhibitor. Number one, where does the inhibitor bind to on the enzyme? And in this case, we can say for certain it doesn't bind to the active site because if it could bind to the active site, it'd be binding to the free enzyme, and we know it can't. So that means our inhibitor is binding to a site on the enzyme other than the enzyme. And any site aside from the active site on the enzyme is what we call an allosteric site. So uncompetitive inhibitor binds to an allosteric site. All right. So now let's consider KM as well as the Vmax. KM, again, is inversely related to the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. So if we look at this reaction, at first you might look and say, okay, if I add the inhibitor, it doesn't seem like I'm affecting the ability of the enzyme to bind to the substrate, so KM shouldn't change. However, it's a bit trickier than that. And you can understand this using Le Chatelier's principle. That if you look at this reaction, it's in equilibrium, but when you add the inhibitor, the inhibitor is going to form the enzyme substrate complex with the inhibitor bound to it, this ESI complex. So when you're forming this ESI complex, you are using up enzyme substrate complex in solution. So that means the concentration of enzyme substrate complex is going to decrease, which is going to cause this reaction to shift to the right. If this reaction shifts to the right, it actually is going to result in more enzyme binding to the substrate. So in other words, the inhibitor is artificially increasing the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate by locking the two together with the inhibitor. So as a result, affinity increases, so that means KM is going to decrease. This is actually the reason why this is called uncompetitive inhibition. Instead of decreasing the enzyme's affinity for its substrate, like in competitive inhibition, here we are increasing the affinity. The second component here is Vmax, maximum reaction velocity. So again, we want to consider if we use extremely high substrate concentrations, can we overcome this inhibitor? And in this case, we can't. Right? Because if you add a ton of substrate, it'll give you a bunch of enzyme substrate complex, which is essentially exactly what the inhibitor wants to bind to. And once you form the enzyme substrate inhibitor complex, there's nothing you can do. There's no way you can add more substrate to get rid of this ESI complex. So in this case, the maximum reaction velocity is also decreased. And now, when we look at the michaelis menten saturation curve, it's going to look like this. Where you can take note, first of all, that the maximum reaction velocity has decreased. All right, you can draw that in with this asymptote right here. So this is the maximum reaction velocity with the inhibitor. And at the same time, you can also draw in the one half maximum reaction velocity with the inhibitor. And you will take note here that the Km with the inhibitor has decreased. Again, referring to the fact that the inhibitor increases the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate. Okay, so that's competitive inhibition and uncompetitive inhibition. Our third type of inhibition is mixed inhibition. And the name for mixed should be pretty straightforward, right? If you think about it, the competitive inhibitor can only bind to the free enzyme. 
the uncompetitive inhibitor can only bind to the enzyme substrate complex. A mixed inhibitor can do both. It can bind to both the free enzyme. It can also bind to the enzyme substrate complex. And in both cases, once the inhibitor is bound to the enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex, it cannot react. So if it can't react, that means that you can't form products. So again, the reaction has been inhibited. Now, as with the other two types of inhibition, the first question we want to ask ourselves is, where does the inhibitor bind? Right? And here it might get a little tricky. You might think, oh, hey, if it can bind to both enzyme and enzyme substrate complex, then maybe it can bind to both the active site and the allosteric site. But that's not the case. So the inhibitor is only going to bind to one site on the enzyme. And because it's able to bind to the enzyme substrate complex where the active site has already been occupied, this means that the mixed inhibitor binds to an allosteric site. Now, we can consider CAM, affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. And here is where it gets a little bit more complicated because again, if you think about it, when the inhibitor binds to the free enzyme, that's very similar to competitive inhibition. Right, which would seek to increase the value of KM. However, the inhibitor can also bind to the enzyme substrate complex, which is like uncompetitive inhibition, which would seek to decrease the KM. That's a bit uh, complicated, right? So what exactly happens to the KM? And as it turns out, it actually depends on the specific situation. So one thing to understand is that even though the inhibitor can bind to both the free enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex, it doesn't mean that it binds to both with equal affinity. So that means there could be a situation where the inhibitor has greater affinity for the free enzyme And there's another situation where the inhibitor has greater affinity for the enzyme substrate complex. In the first situation, if the mixed inhibitor has greater affinity for the enzyme over the enzyme substrate complex, that's more similar to competitive inhibition. So as a result, KM will increase. If in the second case, the inhibitor has a greater affinity for the enzyme substrate complex than the free enzyme, then it's more like uncompetitive inhibition, so the KM decreases. So the point here is that the KM varies for mixed inhibition. And there's no way for you to know what the KM is unless the MCAT gives you more information in the passage. All right, we can consider Vmax. So with Vmax, again, we have the two situations where inhibitor can bind to both regions. But in this case, it's not variable. You can make a definitive statement here that the Vmax decreases. And that's because if the inhibitor can bind to the enzyme substrate complex, there's no way that a substrate can overcome the formation of this ESI complex. So no matter what, the maximum reaction velocity has to decrease. However, we are not able to draw a michaelis menten saturation curve from mixed inhibition, again, because of this variability in KM. It depends on the specific reaction, the specific enzyme and inhibitor being used. Okay, so the last type of inhibition we have to consider is non-competitive inhibition. And here is where it gets a little confusing because you're thinking, okay, we saw a situation where the inhibitor binds to the free enzyme, Another word, the inhibitor binds to the enzyme substrate complex. And one word, the inhibitor can bind to both. So what other possible combinations can you come up with for another type of inhibition? And as it turns out, non-competitive inhibition is not a fourth type of inhibition. It's actually just a subtype of one of these three. 
And specifically, it's a subtype of mixed inhibition. So what do I mean by this? Well, you'll recall that when we were talking about mixed inhibition, we said that the inhibitor can bind to both the enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex, but not necessarily with the same affinity, right? Hence these two possible results. However, there are situations where the mixed inhibitor does have equal affinity for the enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex. Those types of mixed inhibitors are called non-competitive inhibitors. So we can say that non-competitive inhibition is simply mixed inhibition where the inhibitor has equal affinity for the enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex. And as a consequence of this, when you think about the KM, the KM actually does not change. So non-competitive inhibitors do not affect the KM of the reaction. However, since this is mixed inhibition, the maximum reaction velocity has to decrease. And of course, this also binds to an allosteric site. Now, if we take a look at the michaelis menten saturation curve, what we can see is that the graph is going to look like this. And what you can appreciate about this graph is when you draw in the Vmax with the inhibitor and the one half Vmax with the inhibitor, you end up with a KM that has not changed. Even in the presence of the inhibitor, you need the same amount of substrate concentration to get to one half maximum reaction velocity. That's actually the reason why the name for non-competitive inhibition is what it is. It's non-competitive, which means there is no competition between the substrate and the inhibitor to bind to the enzyme. And you can see this because when the enzyme is bound to the inhibitor, it doesn't affect the affinity for the substrate to bind to the enzyme. And at the same time, if the substrate is bound to the enzyme, it doesn't affect the affinity of the inhibitor to bind to the enzyme.